Hi, are you interested in becoming a VTuber or just the VTubing world in general? What apps do they use? How do I get started? How the heck do you become a VTuber? What is the VTuber 101? Now in the past when I answer this question, a lot of times I jump into explaining 3D PNG tuber. Going into how to get your own model and whatever else might be best is to take a couple steps back and uh, start where I started, which was just downloading one app. This video is going to go over 2D VTubing since that's the one I know the most. I do have a video on how to get started with PNG tubing, but I don't really know anything about 3D VTubing. So if you have any programs that are really good for beginners, please feel free to leave them down below. I'd love to see the suggestions. Let's get started on 2D VTubing. When I was really interested in VTubing, the first thing I did was try and discover what app are these people using? VTube Studio is the app I use and in it already has some models. So I downloaded it on my phone. I use the dog model first. You can click up here and you can click on some of the models that are available. This was my favorite one. Honestly, I still want a model that looks like this so much. I love them. If you get it on your phone, it'll automatically start tracking your face so you can start to see how it moves, get a sense of some of the tools. So as you can see here, uh, there's some animations. Look at what is already built in. So that's number two. There, the hotkeys were already established. Backgrounds that you can play around with that are really, really nice. Here are some of the items. If you want to explore more, you can go onto this cloud and it's hooked up to Steam. So you can download some more free items. This yellow button locks your VTuber in place. So see, my model movement is now locked. Oh, so if I click it now, it's locked. I can't drag it anywhere no matter how much I try. I add the VTube Studio logo and I want it to stay on my head, right? And see here, when you click on the item, it says pin item to model. So it is pinned onto my head. And whenever I don't want the item anymore, I just drag it over to the end and it deletes it. As you get more familiar with the tool, there are some cool things you can do. I have a whole bunch of TikToks that go over it, but I'm gonna go over one important one right now. Let's say you want to connect your VTuber to your phone. So let's watch the setup video together. After creating my video on the phone stand, I got a couple of you asking questions on facial tracking, what apps do I use? Main app I use is VTube Studio. I like to set it up where my phone is tracking my face and it's sending the information over to my PC. You can do this in two ways. You can have your facial tracking all within VTube studio meaning you use the application and then the pc application as well to set that up you need to go to your settings page when you first open up the vtube studio app on your phone there will be nothing on the ip section so what you want to do go to your pc click on show ip list make them match make the port match and then click on connect to your pc make sure the status bubble is green that means your connection is working in case it still doesn't look like it works get out of the settings click on the very first circle with the camera, it should start working. For me, this worked for a lot of my models, but for this one in particular, I rigged it for V Bridger only. My teeth do not move when I'm using VTube Studio tracking because they are rigged to the jaw movement captured in V Bridger. For most of you, you do not need to worry about V Bridger. V Bridger is an application that costs $10 on Steam, $5 for iFacial mocap. So in that video, I mentioned a little bit about V Bridger. Now, I don't want to get into it, but if you are interested in understanding a little bit of the differences, I'll share with you one scary, scary thing. So I rigged my teeth to move with my jaw. So when I don't use V Bridger, this is what it looks like using VTube Studios facial tracking. And your mouth won't do this. Mine only does this because I made it specifically like this. Only to work with my jaw. From my understanding, mimics the way 3D models can be very expressive. I highly recommend that before even looking at VTuber models, just get familiar with the app. See if you like it. VTube Studio is particularly nice because it comes with a lot of nice plugins. I'm using the VBridger plugin. As you get more familiar with your model and your tracking, you you can adjust some of these items so here you can see all the little items um, where my brow is these are all modified to my face you don't have to stay with the settings that are on by default you can play around be very careful not to adjust too much i personally like to take screenshots of the settings that i am changing so that I know what the default was and I can go back and restart if I have to. Let's do one together. For this one, it usually shows up like this. This isn't great because when you are trying to close your mouth, sometimes it stays 
open a little bit even though your mouth is closed adjust it a little bit so it takes a little bit more effort to open your mouth so another aspect is look this is me when i smile where my teeth it's awful it's awful so i'm looking at this bar that shows my i don't know exactly what this bar is but it's indicating where my mouth lands when i'm smiling so let me smile again it's like hitting the 0.45 so i put 0.45 and now I can reach a smile, my full smile without having to hurt my cheeks. That's a way to adjust the mouth to fit your needs. And you can see now my mouth moves a lot nicer with less restraint. If you want to add a new one, you just scroll all the way to the bottom and you can hit your input. This will be matched up to a face tracking parameter. You can have the ones from that are common all the way to be Bridger plugins or I guess this is like hand tracking. Never, I've never done it, so I wouldn't know. And then we have output, and that is a parameter that you rigged in Live 2D. It's also a good idea to go to the camera settings and scroll down till you see virtual webcam configuration and activate this virtual webcam. This will be very helpful if you use like Prism Live Studio or if you use uh, TikTok's live streaming program so that you can use the VTube Studio Cam as your source and it helps not having to worry about uh, seeing all this extra dialogues. Like you won't see this pop up. You won't see settings pop up if you have to change something. It'll be your virtual webcam. So it'll just show something like this. Right underneath it as well, there is Spout 2 configuration. I would install Spout 2 if you're using something like OBS Studios. It helps you do everything that the virtual webcam does, except it has an added thing of not needing to chroma key out your green screen so it'll automatically show you when you have the color picker screen on and transparent in capture so this is how it works with spout 2 i don't have to worry about my model changing its color a little bit one of my blue ears disappearing because blue is too close to green i guess so it disappears when i try to chroma key it out it looks like a much nicer capture i just get this very clean transparent look all over my model you don't need a model you don't need to think about like creating art you can start getting into the world of VTubing. getting familiar with the app is a great first step that's all for me in this video thank you so much for watching and I hope to hear so much more about your journey in VTubing.